Hi everybody, my name is Lizbug, and today we are back in Strange Horticulture. I've already finished the main game that I know of, but there are still plants to identify. As you can see here, it says that I've only got 58 out of 77. And as we learned in my last video on Strange Horticulture, there are multiple endings, so we'll have to go back and do those too. For now, I'm going to focus on identifying these new plants and seeing what else is going on. It said earlier, so I'm assuming this is taking place after, excuse me, <clears throat> before um, the very end confrontation with the servant or the Woken Dendru. So I suppose this is just busy work identifying plants. As you can see, we've got a lot of plants that have not been identified yet. I'm going to move this watering can kind of as a barrier. Um, let's go ahead and open up shop. First, petting Hellebore, our lovely shop cat. Sorry, Hellebore. Alright, Simone Green. It's good to see you too, Hellebore. It has been a while. You seem as relaxed as ever, though nothing ever phases you, does it? I must admit I've been buried in my books and seem to have missed all the excitement. Yeah, she kind of wasn't around toward the end of the game. I hear you and your plants had a part to play, though. I've been collecting... Collate... Collating? Collating. Some information on a selection of plants for a little book I'm putting together. I was hoping you could help me finish identifying all these plants. Ah, that's where this comes in. Let's start with the Moonlight Flower Bella Knox. I've always loved that one. Okay, so I'm gonna assume this is in my book, then. Yes. The Moonlight Flower Bella Knox. But, um, I don't have Bella Knox. Maybe I have Moonlight Flower? Mm. <laughs> I don't have that either, so... Can you tell me more about that? Okay, so I probably don't have it then. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I already have one right here. Have you heard of the Monastery of the Black Veil? Vale? I think it would interest you. I learned of it from a man from Ravenglass. If you're ever in that part of the world, you should ask him about it. He owns the Horseshoe Inn on Main Street. Okay, so we need to go to Ravenglass then. Let's see. Can I get my... Oh my goodness, there's so many letters. Nope, nope, nope. Let me close my archive. There you go. Yeah, now I can actually see all my tools. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay, so what? J6. I am met by a man with a thick black beard and kind eyes who is delighted to have found a willing ear to listen to his stories. You won't find the Monastery of the Black Veil vale marked on any map. They don't want to be found. The monastery was on the edge of the wood. I remember that much. We must have been heading west because I could feel the sun on my face and it was evening. We crossed two rivers. Then we followed a river for a while so I could hear it to my left as we traveled. They left me here in Ravenglass and I've stayed ever since. As I turned to leave, he adds, Here, if you're serious about going, you'd better have this. So that's his instructions. And another elixir. Ooh. The elixir of the Black Veil. Vale. No seed will grow that does not wither. No water will languish upon the river. No man will last forever. Hail, we all will wear the blackened veil. Vale. Leaf of the Storian. Dark flower of the tomb. Stench of the twilight. Ooh. Okay, so that's a whole other recipe for an elixir. If you don't remember... I now have this really nifty um, science kit that I can create elixirs with. So this is another recipe. We've already made three so far. We have the Elixir of the Damned, Baylock's Elixir, and St. Quentin's Elixir. So now I've got a fourth one we can make. I'm going to put this over here. So let's go ahead and use the will to explore to figure out where he was. So they don't want to be found. Monastery was on the edge of the wood, 
So they took him to Ravenglass. So we're kind of going from Ravenglass over. So he says that it was they were heading west and crossed two rivers when they let put him in Ravenglass. And one of the rivers, the third river, was on his left. So we know it's east then because he's following west. This is the wood right here, right? But this is a lake. Let's see. Maybe here, because we have two rivers, and then he would have followed it, and it would have been on his left, right? One, two. I'm going to say it's right here. Oh, yes! Nice. Three figures, their faces hidden behind black coverings, come out to meet me. The figure on the left speaks first. The monks of the Black Veil know of the horticulturist. Then the one in the center of the group adds, They will share their knowledge if they receive the payment. The final member of the trio stays silent. The elixir of the Black Veil. Okay, so we have to make it first. So I-12, so let's leave. Put our map and stuff away. Archive this. Archive this. And now we need to create it. probably identified already. For now, let's just look it up so we know what it looks like. Oh, we haven't identified it yet. The dark red fruits should not be ingested under any circumstances, as they are highly poisonous, resulting in insanity and then death. Oh, fun. <clears throat> A cross-section of the stem shows the distinctive triple xylem and phloem, I hope I said those words right, of the storian. Okay. So we're looking for a plant with red berries, dark red fruits. Dark red fruits. Okay, so these are already identified. <clears throat> so it would be one of these, but none of these have dark red fruits. I, I'm, I wonder if I already have it. Oh look, yeah, this one's a Storian. Red fruits, long flat leaves. That checks out. So then it's Leaf of the Storian, Dark Flower of the Tomb. Tomb. I don't think I have anything called Tomb. Oh! I do. Pronounced Tomb, this flower is sometimes associated with death. Tomb is used as a fragrance in soaps and candles. So it's got these leaves. Say this is Twilight Leviata. 
and together they disappear into the monastery. Sometime later, they return with a stack of parchment. Whoa! Four book entries? That's awesome! Yay! We've got Bella Knox. Oh my, oh my goodness! It's still going! <gasps> Woo! Okay. Here's the 
here we go. <clears throat> Gotta prepare my narrator voice. The poliscus flower is crushed into a paste to cure coughs and sore throats. This author can attest that the supposed cure does not work. Oh, and they all go away. Just kidding. Okay, so I suppose we'll just go through these with um, Simone as we go. So we need to find Bellinox or the Moonlight Flower. The Moonlight Flower, a dark, mysterious, and beautiful, has enchanted people for centuries. It is thought to send people mad with obsessive desire, seductively luring them to their deaths like a siren's call. That's scary. So it's got these little round square flowers. This kind of looks like that. Oh wait, no, that's Daisy Dog. Let's look at the ones we haven't identified yet. Hmm. And let's move these. Honestly, you can kind of just squish them over here. The closest thing I have to that is this. Purple flowers with a small sign. See, this doesn't really work. This one looks like it for sure. That looks like Bellinox. Nice. Okay. Spring wax cap. That's a mushroom, isn't it? Sounds like it for sure. So if this is Bellinox, just switch over here. Let's see, spring wax cap. properties. When dried and eaten, it can help relieve pain. That's like the first helpful mushroom we've ever heard of. It looks like it's this one for sure. Waxy reddish caps. That checks out. Here you go. Yay! Alright, so let's... Where are my labels? Let's label spring wax cap. And it can join its identified brethren. Ah, Haveridge. Some romantic soul once gave me a stem of Haveridge. I think I offended the poor boy when I gagged on the scent. He took it as a bad omen. Haveridge. So we know it's kind of stinky. Or at least very strong smelling. Pretty blue flowers line the stems of this sought-after plant. It is said that if you give Haveridge to your beloved under the light of a full moon, you will both live long and blessed lives. Aww. So it's got these little kind of bell-shaped flowers. It's probably this one, right? Yeah, it's got these little blue flowers. Let's say it has an overpowering, sickly sweet scent. Alright. Let's see. So if this is Haveridge, Midnight. Give it a miss, thanks. What does it do? Used by some as an aphrodisiac, though the potent sulfuric aroma is enough to put off most. This dark mushroom has a fleshy underbelly and is said to have a unique sharp taste to those brave enough to try it. So it's kind of a stinky. It's got these little bumps on it. I wonder if it, this is it. Smells rotten. I don't think I have any other mushrooms right now that are unidentified, so I'm gonna assume it's this is it. Yeah, okay. Nice. So we've got Fool's Midnight. And now we're looking for Demo. It sounds nice. I wonder if that's what Mum puts in her tea. I've often thought she must have a secret ingredient that makes it extra soothing. Demo. This unremarkable flower is related to the common thistle. Its leaves are occasionally brewed into a tea that is used to calm anxiety. Oh, so Verona's tea is really that good. This looks like a thistle. A bland smelling flower. 
Yep, that looks like demo. Nice. This is so fun. Like, just labeling plants might sound kind of boring, I think, to some people, but I, don't, I am thoroughly enjoying this. Lesser Meridoc. I don't know that one. I'm pretty sure we've already encountered this before. identified it, I must have mistaken something else for it. The round flower head of the Mary Dock is made up of smaller yellow florets. A single drop of the strong smelling sap from this plant can utterly drain a person's mental faculties, rendering them slow and uncomprehending. That doesn't sound good. I'd say it's this one, but it's yellow, but it doesn't look like the picture. It says they're small florets. head is made of smaller florets. This isn't super round. It does say it has a strong smelling sap, and it says this is somewhat pungent. Right? This one doesn't seem to match. What about this one? Mm, that one looks more like Lyle of Neptune, actually. Which is right here. Also called Truthsayer, this plant will force a person to tell the truth when eaten. The sparsely petaled pale flowers give off a strong scent. It does say it's really sharp and citric. Yeah, I'm gonna put my money on Lesser Mary Dog for this one. Oh, I gotta relabel it. Let's hope we haven't misidentified this a second time. Preemptively label it. Here we go. Oh! I need to be more careful that wasn't Lesser Merry Dog. I must be more prepared next time. Oh no! Is it this one then? Flowers are very delicate. The petals fall off easily. I I don't think that's it. Oh no. You're being relabeled as Okay, let's make sure we don't have anything else. Have we already identified this? Gandhi root? Lesser Mary Dock. Oh, yellow flowers, very strong aroma, slightly aniseed -y. Yeah, that's definitely it. All right. I think Ennis Elford already gave us this to poison Forest Fair, so I must have already preemptively identified it. Okay, can't make any more mistakes or our mind's gonna break. It says here that Umbrella smells of strawberries. There are so many conflicting aromas in this shop, I can't pick it out. There's like Bed Bath and Body Works in here, you know? I feel like this one does. Acerbic? No, no, no. About this one. Strawberry dipped in honey. Oh yeah. What can we learn about Umbrella? Just to see what else we know. A powerful balm against diseases of the heart. It will not be a cure once illness has set in, but it can ease pain and prolong life. Umbrella has long rounded leaves and a flower that smells of strawberries. That looks... oops. That looks right. Let's go ahead and try it. And label this one Umbrella. <clears throat> Not to be confused with Rihanna's Umbrella. <laughs> okay. Evelum. I've never heard of Evelum. I have not either. Let's go ahead and look it up. The scent it produces is considered overpowering by some, but it is said to stimulate the senses and rejuvenate aching bones. Evelum has many short, pretty leaves. This, I think, is the one, this one. Yes. Don't fail me, you yellow menace. Ah, yes, finally. Oh, so you are Evelum. Let me relabel you. Evelum. All right. Oh. Totally 
the plant's fault and not my lack of common sense. Penny Bell. The leaves of the Penny Bell are chewed by some for their hallucinogenic properties. Fun. However, it is highly addictive and can lead to sickness and death. Don't do drugs, kids. It's bad for you. So I'm going to assume it's this guy because nothing else quite looks like that. See, it doesn't have the veins, though, but this one does, and it does have little things that look like bells. I'm gonna put my money on this one. Penny Bell. I remember thinking that this was Trimble Huff, because Trimble Huff is supposed to look like wedding bells. Thank goodness I can't, like, give this away anyway, because it didn't let me, because, um, then I would have given the bride to be drugs instead of a wedding bouquet. Yay. My mother often uses burdum leaves in her cooking. She's too stubborn for superstitions. Let me guess, it's supposed to be evil. Thick burdum leaves make a tasty addition to soups and stews. Superstitious folk won't allow burdum into their homes as it is believed to bring bad luck. It's got these kind of chopped leaves like this one, strong and leathery. Checks out. Alright. Oops. So we got Birdum here. Let's put this aside. Poliscus. Another herbal remedy for sore throats that doesn't work. Oh well, let's see what it looks like at least. Does it do anything though? This flower is crushed into a paste to cure coughs and sore throats. This author can attest that the supposed cure does not work. So it's just kind of useless. I'm going to assume it's this one, based on the leaf structure. Yes, Poliscus. Which apparently does is like the first plant that we've encountered that I think is actually useless. It doesn't really do anything. Lyle of Neptune, I don't even think I have to think about this one. That matched the description perfectly a few minutes ago. So let's go ahead and label it. And then <clears throat> Agoria. Oops. Now let's open it up. I think this is like the first entry. I've been looking for this forever. When burned, incense made from the woody stem can enhance psychic abilities, strengthening the clarity of visions and prophecies. Light blue flowers, like rounded tufts of gentle lambs wool, characterize this plant. Okay, so I need something fluffy and blue. I feel like I've already found it. Or thought I did. Yeah, that looks like uh, Goria. Sour Bandy, I don't know that one. Well, we're gonna find out, aren't we? Sour Bandy. The Sour Bandy can help with memory recovery, especially if the memory has been deliberately sabotaged. Ooh. The name of this plant derives from the fact that, although edible, the large stamen is extremely bitter to the taste. I, it's gotta be this one got this big protruding thing and it does say that it has an acerbic odor. Nice. So we've got sour bandy and then carnivorous torwin or torin, excuse me, will be easy because I think we've already connected that one too. It's like a Venus flytrap type of thing. Oops, keep doing that. Ooh, 
this is our last plant, you guys. We've already identified 76 out of 77. Here we go. seems to be all of them. You know, I think you've earned the right to call yourself an experienced horticulturist. Why, thank you, Simone. Closed. End the day. So now what? We've identified all the plants. What do we do now? Oh, I'm worried. What if... Why is this blinking? Blinking? Why are you blinking? In case they don't see you again, help scritches. Oh, Belle doesn't do anything other than ignore you. Apology rubs. I love you, Hellbore. <gasps> oh, what? Okay, so that's all of the plants to identify in this game. So then I'm assuming the only thing left for me to do is to find the other endings. I'm not sure how many there are, but we know that last time I played this game all the way through, I got ending two, which I believe is called Elder Finium. So I'm assuming then we have a lot of points in the game where you can make different choices. I wonder if now that I've identified all the plants, I wonder if I play the game again, if it'll let me have those plants so I can actually make different choices. Because there were a lot of times in the game that I literally couldn't make certain choices because I didn't have the plant. So, I don't know. Or it's just going to expect me to remember where I found them all. <laughs> Which, that could be a lot of work. But, I am invested. I want to know more. So we will definitely be coming back to Strange Horticulture, but that was so fun. It kind of just rewards you with all the relaxation um, that the game can provide without any hard choices. Just identifying plants, putting labels on them, arranging them all pretty on your shelves. I just... Chef's Kiss. Fantastic game. If you'd like to see more <laughs> Strange Horticulture or other cozy Let's Play games... Um, subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!